how to utterly destroy somebody's opinion. In this video, we'll learn what opinions are, why they are so strongly connected to people's brains, why people tend to think their opinions are objective facts, and how to utterly destroy them and leave them in a puddle of absolute confusion if you want to. First, how are opinions formed? Most people don't go out and do a bunch of independent research and finally come to the conclusion of their opinion. Most people copy their opinions from other people. And not only do they copy opinions from other people, they copy them without really looking too much at the opinion. They really don't understand their own opinions that well. We'll see why in a second. First, think of four metaphorical binding forces that attach opinions to people's brains. The first binding force is whenever someone accepts an opinion and believes the opinion, it's because that opinion somehow validates their sense of self. It validates their ego. It validates the instinctive ego's need to flex on other people, to demonstrate superiority somehow. All humans, according to many psychological studies, believe that we are superior in some way, which is mathematically impossible. But this is a very necessary instinct from evolution. And so whenever someone hears an opinion that validates that sense of superiority, they really like this opinion and they take it as their own. That's the first binding force. Now, where do these opinions come from? Another binding force is the authority effect. Whenever we hear something from a recognized authority, we tend to accept that idea without much question. This is another throwback from evolution. So now we've got the opinion that validates their sense of self, that validates their ego, and the authority effect. Another binding force is social proof. Social proof is closely related to authority. When something is socially proofed, when something is very popular, when something is very widespread, we tend to accept that idea, whatever it is, without much question. So now we've got an opinion that validates their sense of self, that validates their ego. It's come through the authority effect channel and it's come through the social proof effect channel. The fourth and final binding force of the opinion is something called commitment and consistency. We tend to behave congruently with how we've behaved in the past. So every time they state their opinion publicly, it solidifies, it validates that opinion through commitment and consistency. So now when you've got these four binding forces, the opinion opinion validates their ego, social proof, authority, commitment, and consistency, that's when they start to believe that their opinion is an objective fact, that it's not something that they just believe and someone else has a different belief. Let's agree to disagree. It's not like that. Once these four binding forces are in effect, they believe their opinion is an objective fact, which is why logic is the worst thing you can use to dismantle this opinion. Imagine if somebody came to you and really believed that two plus two equals three. Would you think that that person has a different opinion than you? Or would you think that person is an idiot? That's how people that have opinions that they believe are objective truths think about people that come to them with a different opinion. Because they think their opinion is objective truth, it's kind of like you believing that two plus two equals four, which is an objective truth. So if somebody else comes along saying two plus two is three, they're not gonna have a discussion to see who's right and who's wrong. They're gonna immediately think this person is an idiot. And once they label you as an idiot for not believing in what they think is an objective truth, everything you say will be put through the idiot filter and they won't listen to anything you have to say. Which is why using logic is the worst thing you can do to try to destroy somebody's opinion. So if you do want to destroy somebody's opinion, what do you do? First, you must be absolutely covert. You can't come at them with any energy that says, I wanna prove you wrong, I'm right and you're wrong. You must turn your ego all the way down. You must be completely emotionally neutral. Complete emotional neutrality plus a little bit of curiosity. A good mental model to use when you're destroying their opinion is imagine you're sitting in a classroom and the professor is standing at the front of the classroom and he's explaining some type of scientific or mathematical concept up on the board and you don't understand it. And so you're asking questions about the concept up on the board. You're not asking questions to prove the professor wrong. You're asking questions to understand what the professor is talking about. So put yourself in that mindset and treat their belief as if they believe it is an absolute fact. Ask them about their idea. Ask them questions like, when did you discover this idea? 
How did you discover this idea? How did you discover that this idea was true? What's the process he went through? And let them talk about it. And if you're emotionally neutral enough, if you're curious enough, when you ask questions about their opinion, which they believe is an objective truth, it'll feel to them as if you were asking questions about them because they've associated that opinion with their core sense of self. So they'll really enjoy talking about their opinion, which is good because when they accepted that opinion in the beginning, they never really questioned it very much, which means they don't really understand the internal logical structure of their opinion. So if you remain neutral, if you are slightly curious, you put yourself in a student mindset, asking the professor to explain some kind of concept and keep asking questions about the structure of the opinion, it will eventually contradict itself and they'll find themselves not able to explain an opinion that they thought was objectively true. This is why when you get into a logical argument, when you're trying to use logic to defeat an opinion that they think is an objective truth, they say things like, well, if you can't understand, I can't explain it to you, or it's true if you think about it. These statements indicate that they very much like the idea but there's no way they could explain why it's true. It just feels good to think it. And so when you remain neutral, when you put yourself in the student mindset and you ask questions to expand the details of the opinion that they think is an objective truth, it will eventually collapse on itself. Ask a lot of meta model questions. Who, what, when, where, why, why specifically, who specifically, when specifically, but remain in the student, emotionally neutral, slightly curious mindset and don't trigger any responses from them that make them believe that you're trying to destroy them. Be as covert as you can. Be as relaxed as you can. The only drawback of this technique is you can't ever say, ha ha, I'm right and you're wrong. You have to be completely covert and allow the opinion to kind of collapse on its own and never let them know that that was your intention all along. If you follow this technique, it's a lot of fun. You can practice on your friends and an absolutely fantastic demographic of people to practice this technique with is people that are selling any kind of religion, especially if they come to your house. Invite them in, put yourself in a very, very neutral mindset, slightly curious, and act like they're the professor and you're the student and you're trying to understand what it is they're trying to teach you. And their idea will collapse on itself like a house of cards. It's a fantastic process. It's fun to watch them go through the process of not being able to explain why they believe their opinion is an objective fact, but you must remain neutral. You must remain neutral and slightly curious. This is a lot of fun. Try it out and see what happens. If you have any questions, please drop a comment. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And to learn more about how you can improve your communication skills, please check out the links below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.